I'm glad you made it down the river. Now we get to the heart of the recovery system. We're using the Eutechnic concentrating table. It'll do about five to 800 uh, pounds an hour. This is really the key to the gold recovery system. We're going to take you through a whole process. I'm going to show you how we built the slab in the river to make the frame stable. And that's one of the most important things. The frame has to be locked down so there's no vibration. Because it works off a vibrating principle. We're we'll sure how we did the slab, both it together. We did a minor modification with weight, uh, down and weight over the technique to help pour the material into the table. We'll show you that also. Also, the water source, we're using a keen two inch dredge with a 50 foot hose down to the river. This is plenty of water supply. And we get the generator to uh, fill the table. So let me show you about the slab putting the table together, dredge, and then we'll get into working the material from start to finish. You see how the whole process goes. But this is really the heart of the gold recovery system. And it's what's going to make you either get most of your gold recovery or nothing. This uh, table recovers probably better than 98% of the gold is there, down to about four to five hundred mesh. So this is what's really important when you work with real fine, fine gold. You don't want to lose it. This is, gonna, this is the heart of the system. So let's go through a step-by-step -step process and we'll show you how it goes. Okay, this is a slab that we built down the river. It's a three by six, about three inch thick concrete slab. What we did we made a plywood template, put it on the frame to make it for the holes for the mounting. Made it real easy to do it and simple. We took some uh, 5 16 bolts and welded them to a metal plate. We have two different forms of mounting on here, which I'll show you right now. And there's the whole slab. Like I say, it's all ready to go. Now we're going to put the frame on there, bolt it up. We're going to level it. That's important also. You have to level the uh, the frame to the table to make sure you have everything in as level a position as possible is you can adjust the angle of the table itself to control your flow off of the material being dumped into it. Okay now we get the frame on the concrete slab. This is the first process. Now we're going to put the bolts on it and kind of get it just just started and then we'll start to level everything up and then we'll mount the table on it itself. The post sticking up, as you can see right in front of the T post, that was modified by Darwin uh, to act as a feeder, and we'll show that also on there. It works out real well in this uh, particular case, and uh, uh, he might implement this on his future models. We're kind of doing a testing on it for him, and it seems to be working very well. But we'll show you what we did on that and how we did it, how we made the, uh, the feeder, which works out excellent in this case. And uh, again, we'll take you through a step-by-step -step process. Okay, now we got the table mounted on the slab. We got the table on the frame. We have to level the frame up. Now, what we've done, we just get a simple level. Come in here a little closer for you. We set it up right there to where it's level in all axes. This will give you the maximum um, results of concentrating your gold into a nice fine line without any loss. This only takes, oh, maybe less than a minute to do. Real simple. Once you get it level, you just bolt everything down, and then we'll start hooking things. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll. We got our keen two-inch dredge. We took the uh, hose that goes basically to the suction nozzle, put an adapter on it, and made it to connect it to a 50-foot hose. So you ran it from the river right up the bank and over to the table. Now we made a splice on the bottom over here. What that does is it allows us to have one water supply source for the table. We'll hook another hose up here too in a moment and that'll be to kind of rinse out the buckets on the inside. Now the table itself has three outlets and what we've done we've we divided it up. The number one bucket which is on the right that's where all the tailings go out 
the second hose in the middle goes into the one uh, the number one bucket and the first hose goes into the concentrating we had a one gallon jug we cut a hole in it and that hose goes in there that's where the bulkier gold is going to go and then we're going to run that through the table again later along with the number two bucket make sure we didn't miss anything this works out real good it's simple and nothing complicated or hard about it now we come to the feeder. This is what we, uh, Darwin had designed the T-handle and he had a bucket. It didn't quite work the way we wanted it to. So we went ahead and made our own. We made a funnel, beveled it down. On the bottom, we can change the actual hole size by inserting different pipes. Uh, this works out real good. The T-handle, uh, unbeknownst to us, acted as a good stability platform to dump the uh, material into the funnel which feeds onto the table at a constant rate. Basically the main thing you want to have done here is that your rock should be classified so that it doesn't bunch up in the feeder, in the hopper. Just getting a closer look. In the bottom we have some pipe we can take out. I don't know if you can see it right here. But we can change the hole size. Right now we have it down to the smallest one. It works out perfect for the material that we're running. And then for the power source, as I told you, we'll just kind of pan over here. We've got, the, uh, we've got a series 2400 watt generator which supplies the power for the table. Works out real good. It'll run about two hours on a tank of gas. Economical, cheap. And we're starting to bring down the material down to the river here, which we're going to mix in the buckets. Uh, mix it about a 60-40 mix. And... Uh, We'll start pouring it in. So we'll go through that process also on a step-by-step -step basis and show you what's done, how it's done, and go from there. And here we are just looking down the Yaki River in Sonora. This river runs probably about 200 miles north and south. Uh, it connects with the Arrow and the, uh, the Modesti, I believe, up north. So it's quite a bit, pretty good sized river. Let me pan around here a little bit and a little kind of quick for the sun. And it just continues, goes on down to... Okay, now we're going full bore here. We got the uh, dredge running for, for water. We got the generator running for power. And as you can see, we got the number one and two hose into the one bucket and the number three hose in the number two bucket. So we're just going to rerun those tailings through when we get done. Now Dieter, the table's pretty much set at the right level. You can adjust it so you can feed out more material. But we found out that if you keep the material flowing at a constant rate, you don't have to keep on adjusting the table. That takes a lot of time and energy and it's more efficient. What Dieter's doing now, he's rinsing the bucket out. Keep it at a steady pace, you don't overload the cable. We found out if you do that, a lot more of the gold goes out to the number two and three holes, which is kind of not half. This is what he's doing right now.
soda ash and then they put in the, uh, the crushed up rock. The soda ash breaks up the slimes so the gold will settle to the bottom. And then once it's put in the bucket, it's mixed around by hand to make sure all the lumps are taken out of it and stuff.